Welcome to the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. This is our 178th episode, and this is season 2024, a time for revolution. The theme of this year's show is concentrated in this pamphlet, Revolution, building up the basis to go for the whole thing with a real chance to win. A strategic orientation and a practical approach, and I'm here with Sansara Taylor, the co-host of the Revolution Nothing Less show. Happy New Year, Andy, and I want to greet everybody tuning in for this momentous year, 2024. We have a new year. What humanity needs most of all is a fundamentally new way to live and a radically different system, and that is, as Andy said, our mission. You know, I think something that's really searing into people that for years, Gaza has been known as an open-air prison. Two million, over two million people in a tiny area constrained by the Israelis. People, 60% of the people, I believe, have been facing food shortages trickled in by Israel. But then, over the last three months, that open-air prison has been turned into a death camp, a horror site of execution. 2,000-pound bombs dropped on people danger of, of starvation as food is short. There's no water, no clean water. The Israelis are blocking desalination and water purifying means. People are thirsty all day. They're living in tents. This is a horror of this system that your government, this U.S. imperialist government, is perpetrating on the people of Gaza, and it signifies what they do and the nature of their system. And this can't go on anymore. You know, this pamphlet that you held up, the opening says, if you don't know why we need a revolution and you don't know how this revolution can be made, then you don't know what you need to know. And this is what we're out to change with this show and with the Revcoms on a mission this year. And we're calling you into this because we're told, oh, we live in the greatest of all possible countries, the greatest system that's ever been. And look what the U.S. is backing in Gaza, which you were just talking about. And look at the fact that here we have a fascist Supreme Court took away the right to abortion. Right now, we enter the new year with the women being sent home from the hospital, having miscarriages, their lives in danger, and because doctors are afraid to give the life-saving abortions women need, let alone the abortions women need just electively to live their lives as full human beings. In Ohio, you have a young black woman, Brittany Watts, facing felony charges after she was sent home from the hospital, denied the life-saving treatment she needed for her miscarriage, and so she miscarried in a toilet, and she is being charged with abuse of a corpse. Mm. This is not the greatest of all possible systems. This is a system that has patriarchy, that has imperialist conquest, and genocidal plunder of the world built into its very nature and foundation. White supremacy as well, xenophobia. This system cannot be reformed and it needs to be overthrown. This is the only way out for humanity. Yeah, this is, this is not a time for complacency for two reasons. One, humanity is facing not only all the horrors that you spoke of, and there's also the horror of the border in this country. I know you have Trump talking about immigrants poisoning the blood of the country, straight up Nazi talk. Nazi talk, calling, calling even his political opponents vermin, mm -hmm. right out of the Nazi playbook. But look, this is not a time for complacency. This is not a time to just think things are going to blow over for two reasons. One, on top of all of this, we're also facing two existential crises. Existential means the future and whether there is a future is at stake. One with the environment. Both of these both Genocide Joe and Fascist Trump, both of them have not doing what needs to be done around the environment. And two, the danger of war, nuclear war, looms larger than it has for over almost 60 years. That's one reason not to be complacent. There's another reason that's actually a good reason to not be complacent. There's the possibility of an actual revolution and a liberating society that people could live in that's concentrated in the Constitution for a new socialist republic written by Bob Avakian. And it's also another reason to be optimistic about this year, which is that we have that leadership in Bob Avakian, who's developed a roadmap to make an actual revolution in this time. And that's something we need to get into. And it's our mission, like you said at the opening. This year, we are out to recruit thousands in the near future into this revolution as an organized force. And we want to put you on this mission with us because we are going into a momentous year. 
And in particular, the 2024 elections are shaping up to be profoundly momentous, not because of the great choices we have between genocide Joe and mega fascist white supremacist Donald Trump or that lunatic RFK. Those are not the real choices that humanity has. But the real reason this is a momentous election season is because of the way the rulers are at each other's throats, the way that they're shredding the norms, the way that people's lives are being jolted and disrupted and will be increasingly so, the way that the fundamental nature of this system is being revealed through things like this genocide it's backing in Gaza and, and the drill, drill, drilling that Biden is doing and Trump would do as well. For oil. For oil. The way this is being exposed provides the opening for revolution to be wrenched out of the coming storms. We are entering a period where there's going to be a fight. We're on track to see a fight over the way this society is ruled, an all-out fight among the rulers and potentially with the people taking things in a different direction on a scale not seen since the Civil War in this country. And we need thousands in this revolution soon to shape the way this fight unfolds and to be in position to swing millions for this revolution because we're in a period where this revolution could be made real. But that depends on exactly what you were just talking about. That depends on you getting involved in this revolution. For ourselves here on this show and the movement of the Revcoms, we are out to recruit you now, as you said, and we're going to really step up those efforts and a lot of what you're going to see on the RNL show is the Revcoms and you out on the streets of this country, organizing people for a revolution. Yeah, so those are the, we're going to do two things today. We're going to show the illustrated substantive piece from Bob Avakin called Exploitation, what it is and how to put an end to it. It's narrated by part of our crew here at the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show and illustrated by them, but it's the words and the writing of Bob Avakian. And it gets to the essence of this system, why it really cannot be reformed scientifically. And then after that, we're going to show an excerpt from the successful uh, fundraising live stream we did just a few days ago here on this channel to kick off 2024. And it's going to be an excerpt where Annie Day and I speak about the important movement that we need to kick off and take to a new level, a grassroots movement to spread the interviews that we did here on this show with Bob Avakian. The Bob Avakian interviews, hardcore for revolution, heart and soul. Um, through a grassroots movement and, and where we get into the difference this can make and how you go out to friends, to strangers, to family members and share this and spread it and what difference that will make. So that's going to be our show today. But before we get into, before we show this piece on exploitation, I want to bring you from that interview, a very brief excerpt from Bob Avakian in that interview, where when you look at all of the horror that we just talked about, what it is we must do. Watch this. We can no longer afford to allow these imperialists to dominate the world and to determine the destiny of humanity. They need to be overthrown as quickly as possible. Exploitation, what it is, how to put an end to it, by Bob Avakian. In a recent report about revolutionary work in Chicago, one of the people that are drawn to the revolution indicated that he did not know what the word exploitation means, because this word exploitation describes something very basic about the system of capitalism that we are now forced to live under, and because many people do not have a clear understanding of this, it is important to explain what is meant by exploitation. In the most general sense, to exploit means to take advantage. More specifically, it can mean taking advantage of using other people. And in terms of a scientific understanding with regard to the economy, Exploitation refers to a situation where one person or a group of people accumulates capitalist wealth that is created by the labor of others. 
Capitalism is a system in which a relatively small number of people, the capitalists, own and control the major means of production, factories, land, raw materials, machinery and other technology, and so on, and are therefore in a position to force other people who do not own or control means of production to work for them. It is the labor of those exploited by the capitalists and not the brilliance or entrepreneurial genius of the capitalists that actually creates the wealth that the capitalists appropriate, take for their own profit and use. Once again, the capitalists are in a position to appropriate wealth that is produced by others whom they exploit because the capitalists own and control the major means of production. Means of production which themselves were created through the labor of people exploited by capitalists. For example, in a capitalist owned factory, the machinery that people work on was produced by people in other factories working on raw materials to create that machinery. And those raw materials, in turn, were mined by people also working under conditions of capitalist exploitation. Under the capitalist system, there is always a surplus population. People who are unemployed because they cannot be profitably exploited. And the existence of people in this position is something which the capitalists take advantage of in exploiting those they do employ. If you don't want this job at the wage I'm paying you, there are plenty of other people out there who are desperate for work. Today, this system of capitalism has developed into a highly globalized system of exploitation, capitalism imperialism, in which a relatively small number of capitalists own and control means of production on a massive scale and appropriate huge amounts of capitalist wealth. On the basis of exploiting billions of people throughout the world, including hundreds of millions of women, and more than 150 million children who are most viciously exploited, super exploited, especially in the third world, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Once again, these billions of people are in a position where they can be viciously exploited because they do not own means of production. Many of them, particularly in third world countries, are people whose families previously owned small parcels of land on which they farmed, but they have been forced off the land, no longer able to survive by farming. This is a tremendous problem because according to the UN, about 735 million people faced hunger last year. Now that breaks down to nearly 10% of the world's population. And these numbers are even higher when you factor in those who lack adequate or healthy food. That number accounts for nearly 30% of humanity. In large part because of the domination of the politics and the economy of their countries by capitalists 
centered in imperialist countries like the U.S. It is this system of capitalism imperialism that is the root cause of all of the horrendous, unnecessary suffering and madness that people throughout the world are subjected to. and the growing threat to the very existence of human beings as a whole. To get rid of exploitation and all the oppression that goes along with it, it is necessary to get rid of the system of capitalism imperialism. And that means making revolution to overthrow this system and replacing it with a fundamentally different and far better system based on the constitution for the new socialist republic in North America. What this revolution and this radically new system are all about, why this revolution is possible, and how to carry out this revolution, all this is made clear in a number of works of mine and others at Revcom.us, including the proclamation, We Are the Revcoms, and the declaration from the Revcoms, We Need and We Demand, a whole new way to live, a fundamentally different system, as well as the constitution for the new socialist republic in North America. This is also brought alive on the YouTube RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. And here's the challenge. Everyone who can't stand this world the way it is, who is sick and tired of so many people being treated as less than human, who knows that the claim of liberty and justice for all is a cruel lie. Who is righteously enraged that injustice and inequality go on and on and on, despite false promises and honeyed words from people in power or those seeking power. Everyone who agonizes about where things are headed and the fact that to be young now means being denied a decent future or any future at all. Everyone who has ever dreamed about something much better or even wondered whether that is possible. Everyone who hungers for a world without oppression, exploitation, poverty, and destruction of the environment. Everyone who has the heart to fight for something that is really worth fighting for. You need to be part of this revolution. Especially at a time like this, a time when big things are up in the world, affecting the whole future of humanity, when those big time exploiters and oppressors who rule over us in this country are bitterly divided among themselves and increasingly unable to hold things together as a unified ruling class. When there is not just an urgent need but a real possibility to seize on this situation, to overthrow them altogether. If you are not getting with the Revcoms, revolutionary communists, who are working every day for this revolution, if you are not part of working to bring about this revolution, then what the hell are you doing? Baba Vikian included three substantive footnotes throughout this article, which deepen our understanding of materialism. Footnote number one, on the bitter effects of exploitation. The bitter effects of being part of the exploited class, the proletariat, under the capitalist system, is something people experience in their everyday life. In the book, The New Communism, I spoke to this. Quote, you may be at the bottom of society. Either you have no job and you're scuffling the way you can. Or you get a job and somebody exploits you. And to get that job, you have to go and sell yourself. That's what you do. You go in for a job interview and they say, well, now let's get into your history and all that. Sometimes they want you to piss in a bottle and sometimes they want to know everything about your personal history. They want to know if you've ever been arrested or do you have a felony conviction. So you left college 
before you finished? Yes. Why? I got a felony conviction. And you can't say, what the fuck? Just give me the job, goddammit. I'm hungry. You're out the door. You can't even more politely say, excuse me, but that's kind of a personal question, don't you think? No. Because the person interviewing you is working for the people who own the means of production, and you don't own any. So you're in a powerless position. Because if you don't satisfy them, they don't hire you. As for the foundation of the capitalist system, this was built up with a lot of violence. For example, in Europe, several centuries ago, large numbers of peasants, small-scale farmers, were driven off their land and forced into the position of proletarians, having to sell their labor power, their ability to work, to capitalists developing in the cities on the basis of their role as merchants as the heads of early manufacturing associations, as moneylenders. In the Americas, huge numbers of the original inhabitants, who had managed to survive the wars and disease brought by European invaders, were forced to labor, often under literally life-stealing conditions, to enrich exploiters who came to the Americas from Spain and other countries. And let us not forget, the foundation for the wealth of this capitalist country, the good old USA, was, to a very large extent, based on slave labor. As Karl Marx, the founder of communism, pointed out, with biting irony, the rosy dawn of capitalism was marked by the enslavement of massive numbers of Africans. literally working to death, conquered people in South America, forced to mine precious metals, and other monstrous means of accumulating wealth. It is a fact that some of the earlier societies in the Americas, such as the Inca Empire in South America and the Aztecs in Mexico, were themselves based on exploitation of masses of people by the ruling classes in those societies. And it is true that there was slavery within Africa itself for some time before the invasion of that continent by European exploiters. But all this took on much greater and more horrific dimensions beginning several centuries ago with the conquest and colonization of these continents. The development of the international slave trade and the relentless machinery of capitalist exploitation. capitalist exploitation, through which generation after generation of people, in the millions and millions, have been ruthlessly used up and killed off, quickly or more slowly. In the manic capitalist quest and merciless competition among capitalists, for profit and more profit. There has been another horrific incident at a garment factory in Bangladesh. Over a thousand people died when an illegally extended eight-story building, uh, uh, which was a garment factory, collapsed in an instant. Uh, they made clothes mainly for Western fashion brands. I was hearing the scream from the rubble. Someone saying, chop off my leg and pull me out.
Footnote number two on the other capitalist exploiters. Besides those who are directly involved in exploiting people in the process of producing the wealth of the capitalist system, there are also other capitalist exploiters. For example, there are the banks and other financial institutions that make profit through loans to the corporations and other businesses that directly exploit people. These loans have to be repaid with an additional amount of money, the interest. Plus, often these financial institutions themselves invest in the corporations that are directly exploiting people. And in turn, large-scale corporations also become involved in financial transactions. Finance capital becomes woven together with capital directly used to exploit people in the process of production. There are also merchant capitalists, for example, those who sell clothing or food and other basic necessities. And then there are those who invest in the stock market. But that just amounts to a kind of gambling, betting on which capitalist enterprises will be more successful in exploiting people. Here is the most fundamental point. The source of the wealth that these different capitalists accumulate is the exploitation of people who are forced to work for one or another capitalist or capitalist corporation in the process of producing the things that people use. Footnote number three on why this is a time when revolution could be made. Why this is a rare time when revolution, even in a powerful imperialist country like the U.S., becomes more possible, is examined in a number of works of mine and others at Revcom.us, including Revolution, Major Turning Points and Rare Opportunities, as well as Something Terrible or Something Truly Emancipating, Profound Crises, Deepening Divisions, the looming possibility of civil war and the revolution that is urgently needed, a necessary foundation, a basic roadmap for this revolution, and organizing for an actual revolution, seven key points. And again, this is also brought alive on the YouTube RNL Revolution Nothing Less Show. We want to go back to the conclusion of Baba Vikin's article, Exploitation, What It Is, How to Put an End to It. B.A. writes, quote, Everyone who can't stand this world the way it is, who is sick and tired of so many people being treated as less than human, who knows that the claim of liberty and justice for all is a cruel lie, who is righteously enraged that injustice and inequality go on and on and on. Despite false promises and honeyed words from people in power or those seeking power, everyone who agonizes about where things are headed and the fact that to be young now means being denied a decent future or any future at all, Everyone who has ever dreamed about something much better or even wondered whether that is possible. Everyone who hungers for a world without oppression, exploitation, poverty, and destruction of the environment. Everyone who has the heart to fight for something that is really worth fighting for. You need to be part of this revolution. Especially at a time like this, a time when big things are up in the world affecting the whole future of humanity, when those big-time exploiters and oppressors who rule over us in this country are bitterly divided among themselves and increasingly unable to hold things together as a unified ruling class, when there is not just an urgent need but a real possibility to seize on this situation to overthrow them altogether. If you are not getting with the Revcoms, revolutionary communists who are working every day for this revolution 
If you are not part of working to bring about this revolution, then what the hell are you doing? That was Baba Vakian on exploitation, what it is and how to put an end to it. This is an incredibly scientific piece on what is at the root of all the problems that humanity faces. Unless you get rid of exploitation, which you cannot do under this system, the world will stay the horror that it is. And he ends this piece by saying, and I want to address this to everybody watching today, everyone who can't stand this world the way it is, Everyone who has the heart to fight for something that really is worth fighting for, you need to be a part of this revolution. And look, if you're not part of getting with the Revcoms, the revolutionary communists, who are working every day for this revolution, if you are not part of working to bring about this revolution, then what the hell are you doing? So there's um, a challenge that was put to you by Baba Vakian that Andy just repeated. And there's at least two ways we want to highlight right now for you to be part of answering that challenge. Um, one is by donating to the revolution. And we want to give a shout out and a big thank you to everybody who participated in the successful fundraiser that we did to kick off 2024. Just a few days ago where we raised, we, we exceeded um, our $25,000 goal. We raised 27000 uh, more than $27,000 just the beginning to get this year kicked off the way we need to. So that needs to continue. Um, and even more decisively and at the heart of the content of what we need to be spreading throughout this country to let people know about this revolution, to let people know about the leadership we have for this revolution and to train them in the science, the method of this revolution, the strategy and the vision of what's possible. Um, is a grassroots movement to spread the Baba Vakian interviews. The interviews that we did here on this show um, over a year ago now with the revolutionary leader Baba Vakian, unlike anything that is out there in society anywhere else. Um, and this is something that we got into on the fundraising live stream. We talked about some experience spreading these interviews and the importance of this grassroots movement. And what we want to do to close out today's show is share an excerpt of this where I'm speaking with Annie Day about this. So well, let's go to that now. I was going to put you on the spot, Annie. You were in barbershops. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe it'd be helpful, it'd be interesting for people to hear some of, you know, it's, it's A, some of the responses, but B, you know, what do you do? You just walk right in and you say, hey, <laughs> yes, yes. strangers, you don't know me, here's something you got to see. Talk, talk so, about it. So, okay, I, I, this, some of this experience got written up for Revcom.us. You can go there and, and read it, but I'll share some of it here. So last weekend, actually, um, which was the weekend right before New Year's, um, you know, different cities, a lot of cities don't have a lot of people on the streets. Um, <laughs> LA is one of those places. So we were thinking about where people are gathered, and they're gathered in the barbershops and beauty salons. Uh, so last weekend, the weekend before New Year's, we um, took a couple crews of us, went out in different teams, mapped out the area where the different barbershops and beauty salons were, and we walked in. We walked in with a sign, and we walked in just and said, hello, y'all, we're the Revcoms, the Revolutionary Communists, and we're here to let you know, um, you know, we talked about the situation we're in. We talked about the leadership that, that they don't know exists, this person named Bob Bacon that they need to meet, and we talked about the moment we're in, the time we're in, where we actually could go for a whole different way to live in a whole different system, and it was about a 35, 60-second intro, and then we said, now we're going to play you a clip 
from the revolutionary leader, Bob of Aiken, and we held up a tablet and we had a little speaker. Um, one barber shop, we said, hey, that we could tell they were feeling what we were saying. And we said, hey, why don't you turn down the music so you all can hear this? And the guy who stopped cutting hair went over and turned down the music so the barbershop could hear uh, Bob Avakey. And it was like a 45 second clip. This is your mission. This is your mission to put revolution on the map. Not all this garbage that, that people you think is, you know, uh, want to think is the way to go, you know, all this, you know, I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind and, and dogging down the women and all this bullshit. Put revolution on the map. Put it on the map by standing up against the system. You want to do something that takes, on, takes heart? Take on this system. Stand up against this system and all of its atrocities and build up the forces of revolution so that w we can create the conditions where we can have millions of people ready to go for the whole thing. And then we said, okay, y'all, now what do you think? And, you know, this one barbershop, different experiences, different places, but this one barbershop, these guys just were feeling it. And uh, they talked about how people are off into a lot of bullshit when they need to be thinking about, actually, the word they use, the phrase they used is something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. They talked about the music, which celebrates all the ways in which people are killing each other, the youth, youth off into all this madness when they need to be about something positive. You know, they weren't thinking revolution in the fullest sense but they were thinking a different world and a different way to live so we were building on that and, and grappling with each other about that and i said okay now why don't you all hear a, another clip from bob bacon and they'd never heard of ba before so they were getting introduced to him for the first time and we played this clip it's um at the end of a, a discussion actually on the question of women's oppression that you asked him um or actually yeah that andy asked him um about about why Bob Avakian says you can't break all the chains but one. And he ends this clip with a powerful thing. You can watch it on social media and at youtube.com uh, slash the revcoms where he talks about how we have to break out of this trap where the choices are not between the fucker or the fuck. Get out of this whole framework of, you know, if you're not fucking over women in particular or you're not fucking over the people on the next block, then you're soft and weak and your life is not about anything. Get out of that because the choices are not Fuck, being the fucker or being fucked over, the choices are being enslaved or emancipated. And these guys, like, their eyes lit up. It was like they sat at attention. They were like, he said, what? <laughs> and they, you know, listened to the rest of it. It was about three minutes. And it just was, it tapped very deeply into a feeling. You know, it, yes, it challenged the ways they were thinking and going about the world, but it also tapped into a very deep feeling that there's something not right in how we're forced to live that there actually could be a different way and one of the guys goes yo that's your leader that's the leader of this and we talked about who ba is and he kept going fucker or fucked fucker or fucked <laughs> and the other guy goes man that man does not sugarcoat anything yeah. and it just it you know I, there is nothing there is nothing like the connection that gets forged between bob avaki and, and in particular the masses of oppressed people where where you know, when we're talking about like, you know, we got, I read that statement from, from Francis, who I also had the opportunity to meet. And I know one of the struggles was like, look, what's the potential of the masses of people that are cast out, cast out by the system. And there's a very deep connection that BA has with those sections of people. And that's kind of what you see got forged in this barbershop. And look, it's not on its own, all of what's needed. Then, then there's struggle for them to get in deeper. Actually, at the end of that, we said, okay, now your assignment is to watch these interviews and to share them with others. We scheduled the time where they were going to, where they were going to get into it and show it in their barber shop and, and dig in deeper. But I just, there is, there is a, a connection that gets forged and there's like nothing else than the power of this person's voice, this power of this person's leadership. Yes, the way he challenges people, but the, also the way he sees their potential and the way he challenges them because he sees their potential. Um, and that comes through in the interviews like nothing else. Um, so that's that's the experience we had. And I think that has to get both amplified, uh, supported and spread and that you can take up yourself. This is the need for this grassroots movement around the Bob Avakian interviews that Michelle was, was talking about. Yeah, I think. I mean, I appreciate you telling the story, and I think it does capture, <clears throat> excuse me, no. we do need a grassroots movement. There's nothing that is more compelling and rich, richer in terms of giving you a sense of, of why things are the way they are, but also how they could be radically different. Um, 
and the leadership that we have in watching these interviews and watching them with friends and then just word of mouth spreading them, getting other people watching them. Really a grassroots movement that is, you know, person to person to person, barbershop to barbershop, uh, neighbor to neighbor. Everybody, start with the people you know and start with the direct contact with BA in these mm -hmm. interviews. Some people won't be interested. That's Some of the barbershop, one of them, they said, oh, can't bring that shit in here. No, yeah. no, because it got really sharp right away and different people on different sides and they didn't want that. Mm -hmm. And it's heavy because in this, it, these are oppressed people in this barbershop and some of them were real into Trump. There's this macho mm -hmm. black people supporting Trump, which is going up. Oh, he gave us a check. He gave us jobs. A lot of getting played, and it's and it's wannabe slave master mentality. So that came out, and the, our people challenged that, but the barbershop didn't want that disrupting his operation. But there's other people. Okay, that's going to happen. Some people are not going to be for this. We shouldn't accept that, but we shouldn't waste our time on that. But then there's going to be a lot of people who are exactly like the guys you were describing, who who couldn't, couldn't get enough of it, couldn't stop repeating it, couldn't believe what they were seeing. And, and let's be real, from an old white guy, yeah. it blew their minds. Mm -hmm. you know. And let's be straight up, you're very lucky to have this old white guy. This is, the point is not the identity of your leader, the point is does he understand the way out, does he understand what you're going through and why, and how we could be radically different and what, what the world could be. And BA does, and people get that when they see him. And this is going to spread, you know, some, a lot of people are going to be turned down by that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, like Michelle said, they won't get all of it all at once, but they're going to get a lot. And, you know, she said she couldn't watch this, look at the billboards and the music, not because somebody scolded her, but because, because B.A. made you feel how ugly that was and how unnecessary it was, this dogging the women. Mm -hmm. And so then you want something different. You don't want to put up with what you've been told you have to put up with. That's got to spread. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I want to add further is responding to the, the really beautiful statement from Melvin that mm -hmm. we kicked this off with, is that when you watch B.A. in these interviews, and in anything that he does, but in these interviews it comes through in a special way, and these interviews are at a unique time and a time when revolution is more possible, and he speaks to that. And this has a, a particular power and import in this moment. When you see these interviews, it is clear that this is someone who can lead a revolution. Mm -hmm. It is clear that he knows and has the science and the certitude and the experience, the audacity, the tenacity, the, the daring, um, and everything else to, to lead a revolution and to lead people to make a revolution. And you, that's not something you can fake, you know? And I just, I wanna say, and then I'll let you speak, but that you see that and that gives you confidence. Mm -hmm. And you also see, even if you're not sure you want a revolution, and this is something that you see in Melvin's statement, mm -hmm. you see that there's a place for you in the kind of society BA is fighting for. Mm -hmm. So this is somebody who is both hardcore for revolution and can train you as a, as, a, as a strategic commander to make this revolution, which we need more and more people to become through watching and studying these interviews and getting involved with the RevComs now, but he's also somebody as these interviews spread where millions and millions of people, whether they're sure they're, for, they're not for communism, I've heard bad things about that, I'm not sure we want a revolution, but as the ground is being like ripped out from underneath them and it's becoming more and more clear what this system is gonna bring them mm -hmm. and that nothing else measures up, it is clear that there's a place for you in the kind of society that Bob Avakian is fighting for and this can be millions can feel that and can align around and polarize around this and this has got to get out to people far and wide now as this is as the as the storms are shaping All right, Sansara, this brings us to the end of the beginning of the 2024 season of the RNL show, what promises to be a very fateful year, a decisive year, a year that if all of you and all of us do what we need to do, could be the beginning of a tremendously bright and beautiful future for humanity, for the emancipation of humanity here and all over the world. 
So we'll be back next Thursday at our regular time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And until then, let's get out there and make revolution. <laughs>